How many of you have been through an experience where you felt so much pain, but there was no way for that pain to leave you? Or where you felt this small, this belittled, and there was no way out of it? Raise your hand if you've experienced this or if you know someone who has. Probably every single person in the room. Maya Angelou says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. I knew this before I read it because I was carrying a story inside of me that felt as heavy as mountains, and I didn't heal from it until I started climbing those mountains. Are you ready to go on a healing journey with me right now? Yes? yes? <laughs> so, I experienced forms of power abuse, gendered violence, and financial abuse from someone that I worked with who had substantial power over me in the workplace and also over me in the community, um, who belonged to the same culture, same religion. And I kept that story inside of me because I felt so ashamed, because I felt that if I shared it, that I was going to be judged, that I was going to be asked certain questions, that I was going to ruin my reputation. But it took place over a few years, and the longer I kept the story inside of me, the heavier the weight of the story became. And the heavier that weight became, the more power it had over me. And I, myself, was shriveling into nothing. And so I decided to do the last thing that I could do, which was to ask for an apology. Because I was raised in a way where you don't hurt people. You don't do anything that hurts someone. I felt like I would be impure if I were to do that. So I went and I said, you hurt me deeply. All I want from you is to apologize. And he said, apologize for what? So I decided to quit my job move forward with my life, let that story somehow die behind me. But in a moment, a miraculous moment, I decided to report it. And I reported it to multiple systems of power that unfortunately let me down. This is what happened when I reported it. Blame isn't always about t someone telling you it's your fault. Sometimes it's, but why did you answer the text messages? Why did you answer his phone calls? Why did you give him money when he asked you for it? Blame comes in different ways, and it's not just about saying that word, blame. I was told not to talk about it. Brene Brown says, shame thrives on three things, secrecy, silence, and judgment. Not talking about it was going to keep me from experiencing judgment, from experiencing shame. Keeping that shame internalized and knowing that I wasn't giving someone a chance to shame me was so much easier, but it was so much harder at the same time. I was told that it wasn't that bad. I actually had someone tell me after sharing my story, you sharing your story makes me feel like mine wasn't important enough or it makes mine feel like it was ridiculed because what you shared wasn't nearly as bad as mine. So it's not that bad, you know? You can get over it. Kind of like somebody taking your memories of what happened to you and telling, the, telling you 
This is how you experience them. Not the way that you actually experience them. This is how you must have experienced them. It's kind of like they're rewriting for you what you lived and trying to feed you it so that you could erase that memory and replace it with something else. And I was told to get over it. Every single time someone would tell me to get over it, this is what I would think of. I would say what I went through was kind of like trusting someone to take me to the middle of the ocean when I didn't know how to swim. Trusting them to take me there, way into the depth of the ocean, and then drop me right there. And I would start to drown in an ocean of hate and self-blame. Why am I here? How could I have trusted someone to get me here? And every time I would make it to the surface, I would be begging the person who put me there to take me out because I only saw him as the one who could take me out. Isn't it such a powerful thing, at the same time a degrading thing, to look at the person who caused you pain as the only person who could take that pain away, and that there's no way for you to heal unless that person takes that pain away. So I would say next time you tell me to get over it, and next time you tell a victim of any form of abuse to get over it, think about it this way. And what would you do if you were in the middle of that ocean? I didn't get over it the way that everyone wanted me to. I got over it by sharing it publicly. And when I shared this tweet, it got shared everywhere you can imagine. I was told that I was asking for attention. I was told that this is what I wanted. I wanted this kind of media from a simple tweet. This is what you always wanted. Najwa always wants attention. Do you think that this was enough? Absolutely not because the whole world heard me, except for the people that I wanted to hear me. And the people that you want to hear you are not always the millions of people out there who are seeing what you have to say. They're usually your family, your community, the people that you work with. So how could it be that everybody heard you and heard your story, but those around you don't even know who the person is and what actually happened to you. And they don't, you're not giving them the opportunity to say, I still love you for who you are because you're so afraid that they might not if you were to expose your truth. So this leads me to what does Me Too even mean? Because you see the Me Too movement everywhere and you think it's, some people think it's a witch hunt. Some people think it's all about bringing men in positions of power down. That's not what it is. For me, I wanted to hear Me Too from my mom, from my dad, from my friends, from people that I worked with to tell me that they understand. And I was afraid that they weren't going to say Me Too. I didn't even give them the chance to do it. Me Too is about empathy. It's not just about sexual harassment. It's not just about sexual assault. It's about telling a person, I've been in a position where I felt like no one understands me, and I understand you. And it doesn't matter what happened to you. It's what you made of it. This is really important for us to address. The people who need me to the most are those in the most vulnerable positions. We often forget the intersectionality of things that put certain people in a position where they are most likely to be targeted by any form of harassment or abuse or any form of pain. In the culture that I come from, 
there were a lot of things that people didn't understand. When I shared my story, I didn't even know it was sexual harassment when I shared it. I saw it as something terribly wrong happened. A man in a position of power in my workplace abused his power. I didn't see it as sexual harassment until experts told me that. They said, this is textbook. I didn't know that. I had been in Canada for six years when this started. I moved from Lebanon when I was 16 years old. And I lived in a bubble. And when this experience happened, it taught me literally everything that I know about life. Absolutely everything that I know about life. Last week, I was at an event, and a, a fellow poet had a presentation where he asked us at the end to share a poem that talked about a defining moment in our lives. And I chose to write a poem about the moment when I shared my story. So I'm going to share that with you guys today. I still remember that moment to this day. How I hadn't slept properly for hours, days, weeks, actually months and a few years. My face had no color. My eyes were like wilted flowers. I sat in front of my screen for the millionth time. Do I hit enter? Do I share my story for the world to see? Or do I keep it buried inside for my eyes to wilt a little more? For my heart to beat a little slower as the days go by? Do I hit enter? Do I let them all know what happened to me and live in shame for the years to come? And dread the looks I'll get from every person I know? Or do I keep this agony buried inside of me? I'm so, so, so afraid. What will they think of me? What will he say? He will tell them I'm lying. And what if they believe him? They will believe him. They will hate me. They will say I'm asking for attention. Now I'm crying for the millionth time. Why can't I just hit enter? What's the worst that could happen? I could lose all my loved ones. I could be alone forever and live in shame forever. But I can't keep it in any longer. I would rather not be here at all. A voice from within me screams. I deserve to be here. So I hit enter and I said, me too. And I was blamed for it. I was told not to talk about it. I was told that it wasn't that bad. And I was told to get over it. And they said what they had to say. He said what he had to say. Some believed him and some believed me. But I am here. I am alive. I'm breathing and my eyes have blossomed like roses. I see now that love is not conditional on what happened to you, but on who it made you become. They can blame you for what happened to you, but you should not. They can tell you not to talk about it, but you should. They can tell you that it wasn't that bad, but you have the right to feel how bad it was. They can tell you to get over it, and you should on your own terms, not theirs. The most important thing of all is to say me too to yourself. I said me too to myself the moment that I shared my story. Will you say me too to yourself today? Thank you.